Okay, welcome back everyone. Thank you for coming back after the, the break. Uh, we are in our closing session as we wrap up our celebration this afternoon. So it's been such a pleasure to have all of you with us today. Um, our last session will be facilitated, moderated, led by Mary Lee Kennedy, our Executive Director for ARL. And she'll be joined by Kevin and Joe. And you, you were participating just a few minutes ago with some conversation with the two of them. This afternoon, Mary Lee, Joe, and Kevin will talk about the 2023 to 2026 action plan, the work that's underway with the association that Mary Lee is leading with the board of directors and um, my ARL colleagues. And Joe and Kevin will, will join in and to extend the conversation about the research and analytics program, I think expanding on a little bit on what you were hearing and what we were talking about earlier uh, this afternoon. Uh, so with that, Mary Lee, I, I think I will turn the podium over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Sue. I just want to add my thanks as well to all of you, particularly Ava, Greg, Steph, and Gordon, who took you know a leadership role during extremely challenging time. Um, I really appreciate the way you showed, I use the word grit, grit and curiosity and empathy and really dedication and flexibility. You've created a community, a learning community is what, how I would define it. And really this ability to sustain this over time is, is something that I'm hoping we can continue to do. And I know we'll, we'll explore more as we work through it. I would be remiss if I didn't know that none of this would have been possible without Sue. So I hope everybody will join me in thanking Sue because she has been the anchor, the brains and the, the energy that has kept this going um, since when I got here. So I, and I know starting before then. So just huge, huge thank you, Sue. Um, there's two other people I want to thank. And then, you know, honestly, um, so Steve Mandeville Gamble really got this going with others, but really brought me into the loop in terms of understanding how this all worked. And so I really appreciate Steve's um, continued in, in interest and, and also to Joe and really Kevin who are gonna keep it going or figure out what to do next. So I, I just wanna thank you so much for that. And it just speaks to what an association like this is all about, which is a community and I'm just, pleased to be a piece of it. Um, and hopefully today, as I talk a little bit about where we're going, you can see that same spirit of uh, community and curiosity and learning. And I really like what Ava said about, you know, you, there's no failure in research. There's no failure in community either, right? And so so really just, just keep, keep that spirit going and let's hope let's hope that as we create the future for ARL we're doing it with that in mind so I am going to share some slides because I think I want to put something in your hands that you can refer back to um, so uh, I'm going to do that right now and uh, let's hope it works because once I did this it didn't work very well so I will try Here we go. And honestly, if there's questions at any time, please uh, raise your hand. Um, I, I do hope this will be a little bit more interactive. Maybe at the end, that would be the easiest thing for you. So I'm gonna talk about the work that's underway right now uh, within the association. And that by that, I mean the community that makes up the association, not only the staff that work there around establishing a vision, mission, and strategic goals for 2023 and 2026. Um, this is part of a longer term project, which really began in the midst of the pandemic as we began to see the world shift a lot around us. And, and, and um, sometimes it seemed like pure chaos and perhaps that's how it felt to you too. And then we sort of began to get our legs under us, but we, were, we weren't always really sure exactly where, where we were gonna end up. And I still think we're a little bit in that process of figuring it out. Um, as we just talked about hybrid and workplace culture, I think these are 
These are things that I hear a lot about in every conversation I have. And so this is, this is where we are. It seemed like it was a really important time also because the member representatives, so the people who actually have the voting rights at ARL, we've seen over 40 new member representatives join ARL since 2018. And in February, it was like two thousand. it was like 44. And I think we actually have more now. So I don't wanna give you the exact number because I know there's been a few new members um, in just the last few months. So there's just a huge shift of 127. There'll be, a, will be 127 new, uh, 127 member institutions starting July 1st with um, the Atlanta University Center joining us on July 1st. So we've just got this massive change happening as well as we really began to open up who is, who is engaged in our community at ARL with much broader engagement um, by uh, employees and staff and faculty from within the institution. So not only the member represented themselves, which is deliberate and, and we're all really happy about that. So with these big changes underfoot, we felt like we had to look back on where we, where we say what our vision and mission is, which have, have really not had sort of a serious look at them since um, the last uh, strategic the really big strategic planning, which was done, I think around 2017. So it was really, it is time to look at that. So that work is underway. And if you haven't participated in a focus group or received information, you, you will very shortly um, receive sort of some information on where we're heading um, to get some feedback. The, um, at the same time, um, in April of this year at the member session, we took a really hard look at the vision and mission statements and looked at them in the context of the strategic goals because they need to align right we um, a mission is our purpose a vision is where we want to go and the strategic goals are the way we want to get there and so we're and so and how we'll know it when when we are there so that work that work i'll speak a little bit more about today at the same time um, we're going to be looking at what kind of member experience do we want to have and mean that for anybody who's participating with the association, including something like a community of practice or alumni or board members who are no longer on board. How do, how do we engage their expertise and their mentorship and their knowledge in other ways? So there's a lot for us to explore there. And uh, we'll soon be kicking off a task force that's going to be looking at our membership model and our financial framework going forward based on what we determined this year. So that's sort of like the overarching project and we're in the vision, mission, guiding principles and action plan stage. So um, I'm just gonna move this so you can see it. So there, there, there were two real, very, very foundational reports that helped shape the work that's in underway. Uh, because we were trying to create a shared understanding, sort of a shared knowledge base, and knowing that every institution really has a unique context in which they need to look at how the association benefits their organization, while at the same time speaking to this collective or community need um, that represents where we're going and how we want to understand that, but also how we represent it outside, so not just representing one institution, but representing the field. So we had two reports. One was the Ithaca SNR report, which was focused on what higher education leaders perceive as, the, as their strategic objectives and where they see libraries playing in that space. And also what their expectations are of library leaders in, in advancing the strategic priorities of their institution. Um, all of this information is available to you and uh, the links are in, this, in the presentation. So you'll be able to get those at the end if you haven't seen them already. This has been actually a foundational report. It, it doesn't make, it, again, it's, it's a report that needs to be consumed in the context in which any institution finds itself or any research library leader sees themselves. But there are some truths here or across. And this was for Canada and the United States, it's 63 presidents, provosts, vice presidents of research and CIOs who responded to either focus groups or individual interviews. And these are what you're seeing here are sort of the, the four priorities that came out as themes in all these conversations, which is um, 
the pursuit of growth, particularly in the context of the STEM research enterprise, uh, particularly in public higher education institutions, efforts to engage the state, both through its political system and in its with its population, redressing relationships with the historically marginalized communities. Um, and there are definitely significant variations between Canadian and US higher education institutions, as well as defending the residential experience. So this, this gives you sort of a very high level summary of looking at it from the outside in. So how research libraries are seen to be aligned or not aligned with these strategic priorities of uh, higher education institutions. We also took time to do a value proposition survey, which we hadn't done since 2018. And this uh, value proposition, I love that I can actually say this to you. Not that I'm a thought researcher, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm a, I benefit from it, but I'm not a researcher, which is a, we had a 69% response rate, which was very high. We invited everyone who was actively involved in the work of the association. Um, so people who were VPOs, um, anyone on a committee task force or working group and the member representatives. And so that went out to 198 invitees and the response rate, um, we have a confidence level, a level of plus or minus 5% at 95% confidence level. So, so we have, we have, we have um, very good information here. Um, the top reasons for engagement with ARL are listed here. And I just wanna highlight that the, you know, the second top one is benching, benchmarking my library or archives performance among peer institutions. So that was 55%. So the work of the research and analytics committee and that you are doing really, really uh, is very important to, to this community. Uh, I'm not sure you can read this, so I apologize, it looks pretty small. But um, in, in uh, April, we took most of the a better part of a day to really dig into the vision, mission, and strategic goals in terms of what resonated and, and didn't resonate with the member representatives. And um, the, each one of the, um, these visions was developed by the Task Force on Vision, Mission, and Guiding Principles, which is being led by Susan Parker, who's the vice president of the board. Um, and basically what you can see here, I hope you can see, uh, is sort of what she called out, what, what, what is called out is common, you know, about ARL collect, catalyzes, and then mobilizes, what we, we do something in partnership, how we're recognized, um, so that we create trusted, diverse, equitable, and inclusive learning and research ecosystem. So th this is a, this is what we began to work on, and to identify what resonated, what didn't resonate, and to really get feedback back on the vision statement. We did the same thing with the mission statement. Um, the, again, the task force had drafted this based on our existing mission statement, and rather than getting into the the wording of it, I think just looking at what, what stood out as sort of the themes that are on the side here helps to give you an idea of the mission, which is really more simplistically why this organization exists. So why does ARL exist? Um, and what's our purpose? So um, this gives you a sense of what uh, the particular themes were, such as shaping and influencing policy and practice, um, it's, it's a collective, it creates and shares and sustains global knowledge. Um, advocacy, convening, sharing and developing. These are some idea, these are some of the, the key, the key phrases that were in the mission. And we also looked at what uh, are our five, we have five uh, strategic goals, which we've also called priorities, but going forward we'll call goals just to keep consistency, we have five strategic goals and we actually have two commitments. Two, the two commitments we chose not to focus on because these are commitments that no matter what ARL needs to offer its membership. And so, so those, are, those we know we will continue to do, but we really wanted to dig into the strategic goals. And, and so these are the five strategic goals um, and we, we began to dig into those as well. So where did we end up? 
So on the vision, um, sort of the, the big frame framework here uh, was our vision tends to focus on what member institutions do and not what ARL does. And so we will be focusing more on what ARL does as a community. Um, and uh, that is true for the mission statement too. So both of those things were taken into consideration. There's a lot of discussion about using terms national, international, and global, and um, whether those that, that actually was a more were inclusive terms or actually exclusive terms, and whether they were confusing or not confusing. So when you when you see the revised uh, vision statement, you'll you'll notice that's been taken into account. And then um, in terms of the vision. It was also noted that um, we really need to bring leadership and development and the exercise of leadership up to the front forefront, along with uh, something that um, didn't make it on the site, but I should have put on it was just that you know advocacy and public policy is a main is a key part of what we do as an association, and then really to mark the importance of DEI and sustainability. So that, those are the things that came back on the vision. On the um, mission, uh, again, the same thing about, talk about what uniquely ARL offers to its members, take all the tactical components out and move it to the goal, uh, focus on ARL as a, our purpose as a community and our purpose on learning and partnership and advocacy and influence and avoid talking about whether we're national or international or how many institutions are there. So some of this seems a little bit formulaic, but I think the key here is to this, this section right here was really around what is ARL's purpose is really uniquely stated in this sentence. So on the um, strategic goals, uh, I'll leave this with you, but I, I think what's important here for, for this group is that uh, in all, these were the, this, this was the summary of all the feedback, and you'll see two of these are directly tied to the kinds of things that we've been talking about today is helping ARL measure and benchmark ARL. So it may be stats, it may be quantitative, it may be qualitative, right? So it's not always um, it's pure data. Um, and providing a corpus of data to providing guide, you know, bridge that um, need of providing a corpus of data to providing guidance, expertise on analytics and research intelligence. In other words, creating this sort of research agenda. So I think, I think what you've really been talking about over the last couple of days as we've concluded this work it is really is something that's going to really resonate with the community at ARL. So what happens next? We're actually holding the guiding principle focus groups right now, like they're today, tomorrow. Um, we'll be holding another one with fellows and scholars because guiding principles are so fundamental to the culture of ARL. We wanna make sure we're including everybody's participating in them. Um, we have the a vision, mission, and strategic goal drafts will be shared in the next week or so for feedback um, and with everybody. So we're looking forward to your feedback on that. Um, based on that, we'll take a draft action plan and which includes the strategic goals plus the draft uh, vision, mission, and guiding principles to the board for their review at the July board meeting, which is at the end of July, and then updates as needed will be shared back to the task force on vision, mission, and guiding principles, the association committees in this case, uh, Joe and um, Kevin, and then the staff will, if we need to do some work, we will. And so then we'll bring it back to approve in October and kick off the new action plan in January of 2023. So the deliberations that you're having today and the insights that you're offering today about um, this incredibly rich set of work as well as what it could mean going forward is just perfect timing. Uh, lastly, I just, again, so you have this, 
If you're a member rep, you can find all this information through this link, or there's also a link with a passcode for anyone else who wants to find all the information that's informing the work we're doing. Uh, so with that, I'd just love to open it up for any questions. And uh, look forward to talking to you. Hey, I see some things in the stats in the um, in the chats. We'll just say that um, if fifty five percent use stats for benchmarking, or or I would say not using it, but they see it as the reason for belonging. Like that that's that's really the question was what where is the value? The value is in those stats. This makes it even more essential that those metrics are meaningful and demonstrating why they're affecting this 100%. Nancy, thank you so much. Other questions? Okay, well, please feel free to reach out to me at any time, you, mkennedy at aol.org. You can reach me there and um, we'll make sure. Sue, I'm not sure how to make sure we get this back to everybody, but can we do that with the links? We will. If you, I'll circle back to you and we'll get okay. the link from you and I can send it okay. out to on our listserv email. Okay. Yep. And, and so just to, in closing, thank you so much, really. I think we've all learned a lot and it's thanks to you that we've been able to learn it. So really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mary Lee. Um, so I think Joe, you and Kevin, we're going to, to jump in at this point and share um, your, react, your reflections on what does this mean for the research and analytics program? And I know you've touched a little bit on this, uh, or probably feel you've touched on this a little bit at the beginning or earlier this afternoon. Um, but so how does this all connect with the work that um, you've been doing with like broadly with Mary Lee and the board and all the members? Um, how is it funneling into the research and analytics committee? Thanks, how's Sue. it funneling back out? Yeah. yeah thanks, Sue. I, so, uh, Part of um, uh, what we're, we've been asked and, and Mary Lee pointed to is, uh, you know, the committees are, are being asked to do a couple of things, uh, you know, very specifically uh, things around uh, goals, statements and, and uh, objectives and then what initiatives we're, we're taking on. So obviously working within a strategic planning framework. Um, I think the language that the committee is using will really resonate with, with this group, uh, with those of you who've worked on RLIF, uh, but especially around the idea of a, a research um, agenda. Uh, when articulating our, our goal, which is, you know, the very specific, um, you know, the short, the kind of thing you, you know, you could put on your, your uh, laptop sticker or something like that. You know, uh, research analytics have uh, described their work as, um, actually I could uh, read it really quickly to you, uh, demonstrate the value and contributions of research libraries and archives to their communities. So it's really um, aligns well. And I think if you wanted to uh, articulate what RLIF was, um, uh, the goal of RLIF, I, I think it'd be very similar. Uh, and then uh, the overall um, how to do that um, kind of statements, um, I think really resonate also with the kind of conversation we had earlier around uh, there are statements, and I'll keep this a little bit more general because these things get a little bit more refinement throughout the process, but. Uh, there's uh, the idea of um, uh, development, implementation, um, uh, and evaluation of tools necessary to, to do that demonstration, um, uh, aligning that with what it means to be inclusive, impactful, 
um, effective research libraries and or archives. And so I think it um, on both ends of uh, the um, kind of needs that were articulated around um, going forward um, on a research agenda, but also some of the values that I think were, were also articulated in the conversation earlier. And so it's, I think it's, it's, it's interesting to me or noteworthy to me that these are happening somewhat in parallel and I think uh, out of the, some of the root, same root documents, right? So um, the Research and Analytics Committee is still working very strongly with that visioning uh, task force report um, it is, as its root document and um, obviously RLIF is as well. The next step for us is, is going to be to articulate uh, a set of uh, initiatives. One we've we've kind of discussed earlier, and that is definitely the um, work of the task force to uh, overhaul or make recommendations around the statistics program. Um, and and that's a very discrete initiative. It'll take up a lot of the time over the next few years um, uh, in a couple of directions. Obviously, that task force, as I mentioned before, will bring back specific recommendations around statistics, but also they are going to hear and make um, kind of uh, parking lot recommendations um, around the research agenda that um, may not be completely aligned with the uh, statistics program. The committee uh, will soon um, select additional initiatives, uh, but we have kind of teed up um, uh, the idea of uh, taking this uh, celebration and um, articulating something around advancing the research agenda. We don't know exactly what form that'll take, but um, I, I think uh, the next steps from RLIF. Um, and then one, one of the pieces of, of work that the uh, committee has been involved in uh, uh, just this year or so, and, and this is um, uh, an area where I'm really appreciative of Mary Lee's uh, leadership uh, is a little bit more coordination of the efforts around um, assessment and data. So it, on the research and analytics, we've had, um, uh, Nancy's been um, attending, so we have a, a better sense of what's going on with the, with the uh, assessment conference. We've had, um, uh, Eric Mitchell is the incoming uh, chair, the vice chair now. Um, so we're coordinating the effort around iPads um, and then the overall with an ARL, for those of you who aren't um, familiar, there's the program committee, I think that's, I have the name of that correct, um, which is coordinating all the different chairs of the, of the different committees and assessment uh, and data have a, a potential role to play in all these areas. And so there's a really nice coordinating effort, a de-siloing, if you will, that I think um, there was likely to be some initiative um, that reflects the work that's already underway to, to, to do that. Thank you. Kevin, did you want to add? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think Joe really uh, did a great job of sort of uh, going over all the different pieces um, uh, of this uh, you know, and sort of the context in which we find ourselves at the end of the RLIF uh, uh, program. And one of the things that I was thinking about is uh, regarding the committee's role in sort of putting forward some sort of recommendations on what would happen next with um, with RLIF or something like it or whatever uh, whatever that uh, uh, shape that takes. And it occurred to me that, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm just searching for a silver lining here or something like that, but I know that um, all the program teams, uh, you know, uh, experienced, uh, you know, all these uh, challenges and delays due to COVID and the upending of all of our, you know, routines and, and things like that. Um, but I think about the um, sort of confluence of, uh, items we have going on in the program right now at the same time that uh, the committee would now be uh, offering recommendations on RLAF. Had the committee been offering recommendations, I don't know, uh, pre-2020 or around 2020, um, you know, we may not have been in the same situation where we're also considering changes to the statistics uh, survey, right? I think um, the fact that those two things do go together so well and can inform one another um, is actually kind of fortuitous um, as, as the committee kind of wrestles with, with two of these large efforts. Okay. 
Well, be, is listening to the two of you, I think a question for me is what, um, what questions do you have for this group of colleagues or what would be helpful to hear from them at this point that you, I'm not sure you, we've talked about that would help the committee um, as it continues its work around um, priorities and action planning and you know, et cetera. I think one of the issues that came up was training, um, but are, is there, are there questions you all, you all have, or the two of you have for our colleagues here as we, as we continue to wrap up this initiative that might help you in the work that you are, are doing now? This isn't necessarily a question, but um, a few times during our conversation uh, today, I thought about the fact that, um, you know, that the concept of um, sort of uh, uh, providing uh, some resources and information about how to approach the types of studies that were conducted under the RLF pilot um, was sort of uh, seen as something that would be valuable. Um, across the membership and it might be a good opportunity to point out that Sue I know you know we've been working um, on uh, this sort of little side project uh, under the umbrella of RLIF uh, with some folks to put together some training modules that are a bit of a you know sort of a, a meta a narrative I guess on the RLIF um, and so those will be uh, sort of um, coming out to the community uh, later this year um, and so, you know, we're still working through the uh, exact sequencing and content and things like that, but there'll be a series of training modules meant to sort of, um, you know, put some structure around um, if, if you were going to uh, embark on a research project like uh, the, the projects that we've seen in RLIF, what do you need to know? Uh, what are the types of uh, things that you need to think about? What types of methods might be available to you and where do you find more information about them? Um, and we're actually sort of trying to integrate some examples from the pilot projects as, um, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, ways to highlight uh, some of the work that was, that was done uh, under this. That would be great. Good point, good, good point. Um, so let's, we have time for just a little more exploration and then we'll, then we'll wrap up and um, send everyone on their way. Um, and this is really a question for everyone, including Joe and Kevin. Um, and, and I think again, it comes back to, as we've talked this afternoon about priority shifting and just taking a look of you know, what matters most. Um, so what are the issues that libraries could explore now that we have these tools and resources um, at hand. Um, our teams have, have worked on various projects. They've, they've enhanced their skills with different tools and methodologies. Um, are, there, are there issues that um, any of you feel we could explore um, with our toolkit that we now have? Go ahead, Ava. So um, I think uh, for me, one of the things that that surfaces is going back to that idea of advocacy and using the work that we've done to leverage um, uh, making decisions to address some of the issues that we've uncovered, that um, advocacy stance uh, so we're not just doing assessment, but we're also able to advocate for ourselves and the needs that we uncover in our assessment work. Great, thank you. Doing more of what we've been doing. In other words, other comments or thoughts? Okay. If I may, I, I, I do think there's a, a good opportunity. Uh, we've, we've kind of mentioned it a few different times about the, um, 
hybrid work or the impact of you know future of work. And, it, and in some ways, you know, libraries, if we wanted to get, keep with the framing, the wider framing, or um, uh, almost libraries as um, not necessarily case study, but um, uh, as a way of exploring uh, issues beyond our profession, libraries are dynamic work uh, environments, especially within higher education. Um, you, you know, different job classification. I mean, you know, you can get into all that. We might really uh, have a great opportunity to partner with uh, HR researchers on our campuses, with uh, uh, different um, different researchers uh, overall, uh, and and still explore topics that are of real interest to us, but make an impact in the overall future of work discussions. Um, and I, I think it'd be really helpful. And this is one of those areas where we could um, partner across institutions and get a sense of different policy environments, different, um, there, there are obvious DEIA um, uh, components to this kind of research. So I, I might front and center this as we go forward a bit. Yeah. I, I think that's a great point, Joe. And um, we were just talking yesterday about the library as a nexus for interdisciplinary research. And that to the extent that that's increasingly important, um, you know, the library is a neutral space. Um, and so it, it, it's, yeah, it can be a model for a lot of things that are happening across the organization or across the institution. Even just to build on that, Nancy, taking the, some of the, the work that these teams have done on various aspects of these five particular questions and, and looking at it from that through that lens could be yeah, a really interesting thing to do. Other thoughts or comments? I, I do wonder, because um, I know, what is it? Well, of course we have a new chancellor, a new provost. And it's, it's weird because we have a new provost who is heavily data-driven, even though I personally would love to be able to explore more qualitatively as many of us have done, but that's not going to work. So it's almost as if you have to create two documents <laughs> for, for, for these communities. But I'm um, also, what is it? There's a, there's a new position here, like assistant director of digital education or something. So it seems that we're really beginning to explore um, not only the, the hybrid education, but it's like the solely online. I know, I know we have it in the Peabody College, I think all the way up to the doctoral level. Nursing school's been doing master's and doctoral uh, for at least a decade now. But I, I do wonder as that, that really permeates the campus more, um, how we need to be able to look at not only the libraries and just those students and faculty who are not here and who may only see campus once or maybe once a semester, um, like some executive programs, you know, how our role in making st those students and faculty feeling included as if they were here. And also that, that, that also dovetails into a lot of accessibility issues too, with especially if everything is so heavily technology-based. So, so I, I, sometimes I do wonder, because uh, I know here with school medicine, school of nursing, some of that those discussions, well, nurses are already doing it, but at least with medicine, there's discussions. So trying to figure out, um, not only saying, okay, well, we can do this and we can do that, but also just trying to make sure that we can really reflect and assess that we are doing something effective and not just doing something. So, so whether or not that needs to come from a higher level or a broader, a, a broader think tank, maybe that's something to, to also think about. When it strikes me, Philip, that um, your your comment about um, that collaboration is is really key, and I think that was that was one thing we were hoping to explore in this initiative, and we did do some, uh, which is which is great. Uh, but thinking more and more about how we could make that happen more uh, across these issues, and certainly the, the discussions we've touched on today um, about DEIA, our work environments, culture, everything that a number of you have, have mentioned several times. Um, what an opportunity to look at those through a collaborative lens as well. Um, 
and, and share those resources and tools and ex expertise now that, that we now have um, uh, to do this work. So, yeah, thank you. Well, I think on that note, we will bring this uh, closing session to a close. Uh, so thank you to Mary Lee, Joe, and Kevin for uh, leading us in this discussion. Um, and I'm going to turn off the recording. <laughs>